Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. Today we got a pretty wild build. We're going to restore a Hot Wheels Redline Tri Baby. This is a pretty cool looking car, and even though they're out there, they are a little hard to find. But we got a hold of one, and we're going to take care of this car here. Now, there's a lot of paint missing on this car. The wheels definitely need to be replaced. And it's in desperate need of some love and attention. So go ahead and grab your favorite adult beverage. We're going to take this car apart and we're going to restore it back to its original condition. We may change the color from a blue. I'm thinking more of a Windex blue. But it'll be a really cool paint job regardless. Let's go ahead and get started with the restoration of this Hot Wheels Tri Baby. I've already drilled out the post. Now the posts on this car are incredibly thin, so you're going to have to be careful when you drill these out. Got a lot of paint missing off this car, a lot of flea bites on it. There's the triple turbine engines in the back for the name Tri Baby. The base is in excellent shape, the suspension looks really good. A lot of tarnish on the bottom, but we'll take care of that. And the wheels are cap style wheels and they definitely need to be replaced. Interior's in great shape. Now the windshield's got some scratches on it, but we can go ahead and get those sanded out and then we'll get it dipped in the gauzy. Let's continue. Here we're going to stick it in the embalming fluid. We'll give it a good coat here and then set it on the tray. I love restoring these old red lines. It's kind of like my specialty. But it's a lot of fun and I really do enjoy it. Knock off whatever excess you can, because all it's going to do is waste. All right, we'll set it on the tray and we'll let it set for a while. Let's continue. Meanwhile, back in the graveyard. Here we've got the car out of the stripper. We scrubbed it down with degreaser and we're going to clean it up. Now. There was a lot of toning on this car, but if you go through the layers of sandpaper, not only can you remove the toning on the car, but you can also get it to a really nice shine once you polish it up. So start off with something that's a little bit more aggressive, just not, you just don't want to scratch it too deep. And then work your way up the sandpaper scale, and then when you polish it, it's going to turn out like a mirror. So you start off at like 400 and then go to 800 and then 1,000 and 1,500 and 2,000, etc. Work your way up. Each layer subsequently moves, removes the scratches prior. And then by the time you get done, it's really super fine. And that's where the polishing can take it out and then make it look like a mirror. Go ahead and experiment with that and see what you come up with. And then you'll have a lot more confidence in making your cars look really, really shiny. Here I'm using Flitz. And Flitz is a wonderful product. I love using Flitz. And whenever I polish out a car or parts or whatever like that, that's my go-to polish is the Flitz. Now a little bit more sandpaper here and a little bit more polishing. And it's going to turn out fantastic. That's looking really nice, but it can get a lot better. Here's a 57 Chevy I did. You can get it even finer than that, folks. But that looks good. Let's move on. Here we've got the windscreen. It doesn't really need a lot of sanding or anything, so we're going to polish it up and try and get whatever scratches out of there we can using the Meguiar's Plastex Polish. Let's rub it down. Once you get to the point where a lot of the scratches are gone, the plastic is going to start to squeak. And you'll hear that as you're polishing. It's pretty cool. Now when you're done, just make sure you clean it off to get any residue off from the plastic polish. Because when you dip it in the gauzy, you want to make sure that the gauzy is going to stick to it. If you have a lot of the plastic polish on there, it's going to repel the gauzy and it's not going to do you any good.
we're just about done polishing here. When we're done, we're going to spray it down with Zepti greaser, scrub it with a nice fine toothbrush, and we'll get that ready to put into the gauzy. Plastex, great product. Let's move on. Here I've got the base in the lime away and water mixture. Now notice how there's a yellow tinge to it. After the last video, I didn't toss the stuff out like I said I was going to. I kind of got sidetracked. But the brass bristles that are in the water from my brass brush falling apart have stained the water yellow. <laughs> Several minutes later. Now we're going to go ahead and scrub it down with a new brass brush. And then I'll make sure that I dump out this lime away and water mixture. It's, uh, it's seen better days. Use the brass brush to scrub it down because if you use a steel brush, you're going to scratch the heck out of your bottom. And then you're defeating the whole purpose of cleaning it up in the first place. That's starting to look better already. Now we're going to use some Flitz polish and polish up the base. Flitz is an excellent product and I like it because it's a paste or a cream. It's not liquid and the liquid tends to fling and fly all over the place. Now yeah the Flitz will move off there if you have your Dremel turned up to high speed but it tends to stick a little bit better where you want the polish to be. And that's why I like using this product. Plus, it works fantastic. So I'm switching to flits on everything that I do. Man, that polish works fast. Be real careful when you're polishing around your wheels. And the reason I leave the wheels on is sometimes I had tendency to get too close to the wheel if I had it off and the bearing was exposed or something like that. Now I know these are cap style wheels, but I leave the wheels on to protect that wire that comes out from the axle because sometimes that polisher will grab a hold of that wheel or that wire and rip it out. And I found out that if you leave the wheel on, at least the wheel will start to spin or something like that and you won't, uh, it helps decrease the chance of you ripping your axle out of there. So please be careful and do that. That's starting to look really nice. Man, that flits is good stuff. Okay. Let's wipe it down and move on. Now we got to change out the wheels. These are cap style wheels, like I said. Drag your knife over to the edge, push it down in, wiggle it, and give it a twist, and it'll pop right off. Look how fast those come off. Of course, I've done this a few times, too. Looking good. We got two medium meats for the front, and they'll snap right in place. That's good. Another meat for the front and some big meats for the back. Now I got these cap style wheels at the Redline shop. Go to the Redline shop. If you happen to be restoring any old Redlines or like that, John's site, he's got everything you need to help restore your car. Now if he doesn't have it, send him an email and say, hey look, I really could use some of these. And more than nine times out of 10, he'll be able to make it up for you. Now we're gonna use the gauzy. Don't shake it too much. You want to get it mixed up. That's why you see me rotating it. And get and that way there you do it slow. You won't get a lot of bubbles. You don't want bubbles on your windshield. Go ahead and dip it in. Let it drain off. Now let's dip it again. Looking good. Let it drip off as much as you can. And then you're going to touch it to a paper towel or something like that to help wick away that excess. Because you don't want that pooling on your windshield. Now this product is made specifically for the modeling industry for glass. And that's why I like using the gauzy. Now some folks use the Pledge Revive or the Future Floor Finisher like that. And that's good stuff too. 
And it's also a better bargain because you get a lot more. But I like the results of the gauzy and old habits die hard. So I'm going to stick with the gauzy, but I do have my Pledge Revive in a big bottle in reserve on my shelf. We went through with the body and we scrubbed it down with some Zepti greaser. Now we're going to spray it down with this Windex Blue. I got this at the Redline shop. These Spectre Flame paints from the Redline shop are fantastic and I love them very much. Great product. I get all the hard to reach places first. Up in the fender wells and the underside of the car around the cockpit where you might be able to see inside the glass. Make sure you're covering the entire car. Don't do little dibble dabble sprays as I call them. Go the entire length of the car. That's looking really good. A nice light coat or a tack coat. And then let it set for about 10 or 15 minutes. When that's done, you'll come back in and you'll start putting a little bit heavier coats, or as I call them, the saturation coat. And that way there, you'll have a nice deep finish and it'll look really shiny. If you mixed it properly with the hardener that you also get from the Redline shop, man, I'll tell you, the paint jobs on these cars are beautiful and stunning. If you got any questions, please reach me in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them for you. I love how the moonlight shines over the mausoleum. <laughs> now we're going to paint the back louvers on the car. And I'm using this black vinyl roof simulation paint from the Redline shop. This is one of the few paints that you can use straight out of the bottle. And you're only going to use a little tiny bit. So only put a few drops in the cup and you'll be able to spray right away. Now if you happen to put a little bit more and you don't use it all, pour it back in your bottle. That's the beauty of this paint. Do a little tiny bit, nice light spray here, just enough to cover and coat. And you're done. That's it. You're done. It'll dry really quick using a little bit of air there to help but it's fantastic and it gives you that flat simulation or that vinyl roof simulation once you get it to the point where you think it's fairly dry not super wet go ahead and peel all that tape off and your area that you wanted to paint black or flat black is done looks fantastic let's go ahead and move on We've got all of our parts here. We got the body. That paint job turned out beautiful. I'm so happy with the way that turned out. That's sweet. That Windex Blue is beautiful. Here's the base. All shiny with the flits and brand new wheels from the Redline shop. That's fantastic. Here we've got the windshield that we dipped in the gauzy. That looks fantastic also. Here's the interior. That looks great. Let's put them all together and have our reveal. And here's what we started with. A Hot Wheels Redline Tri-Baby in desperate need of some TLC. There was a lot of paint missing on this car and the wheels definitely needed to be replaced. Now, when I got the paint off there, there was a lot of toning on this car also. So we took some sandpaper, we took some steel wool to it, and we also did a little bit of scotch bright pads and we got the toning off the car. Then we sanded it down to get a lot of the rough spots off there and we sanded it down and then polished it up with the flits and it turned out absolutely beautiful. We sprayed on that beautiful Windex blue paint from the Redline shop and we came up with a wonderful paint job that anybody would be proud of. And here's how it turned out. Look at the stunning paint job on that car. That beautiful windshield done up with the gauzy. The brand new wheels from the Redline shop. Those big meats in the back. Man, they look fantastic. We sprayed the back louvers with the vinyl paint from the Redline shop. Man, this car turned out beautiful. Now, you can use any of the Spectre Flame paints on modern castings also. It doesn't just have to be for Redlines. And I've showed you in past videos that you can turn any car 
into a red line. So look at all the wonderful things that you can get from the red line shop here. And yes, they sponsor me and I use a lot of their products, but I'm not going to be sponsored by someone or something that I don't believe in the product, folks. Now, you guys can do this too. If you have any questions, write something down in the comments and I'll get back to you. I read every single comment. I'd like to introduce you to my Patreon team members. Grim Reaper level, William K7 Robinson, Dale Johnson, and Matt Miller. Mortician level, Air Warrior Coffee, Jake Rademacher, Jason Warren, Ray Berger, Ricky Montavo, Sam Pascal. Funeral director level, Diecast Sheriff on YouTube, Double Beast Customs on YouTube, Dave Christensen, Todd Binney, Ryan Goldstein, and new member Evan Rule. Gravedigger, Aaron Murphy, Andrew Hitchens, Bob the Nice, Chris Decker, Grizz Flowers, John Holman, John Sellers on YouTube, Johnny and William Hicks, Keith Kripe, Leroy, Les Jenkins, Michael Oxley, Richie Ramos, Stacy Wright, and Trevor DeViz, Paul Bearer, Daryl Bagtell, Gary Tasker, and Milesium 487, First Drivers, Adam Bowen, Diecast Pirate, Jason Saylor, Jim Silva on YouTube, Joe Pierce, Pete Langford, Pintoni, Richard Reese, Richard Subtrolo, Somo Diecast on YouTube, Scott Turner, Steve Terrence, Tony Hughes, and my good friend Wade Hendricks. Check in the links on how to become a team member of Diecast Graveyard. This video was brought to you by the Redline Shop. The Redline Shop offers a complete line of decals, tools to take your car apart, put them back together, replacement hoods, replacement glass, those beautiful Redline tires, and of course, the world famous Spectre Flame paints. Fantastic products. The Redline Shop at www.redlineshop.com, where red lines come to life. I want to thank you for joining me today on Diecast Graveyard. Had a lot of fun with this red line, and we got a lot more builds coming up. We got some other build offs coming up. We got the Christmas build off coming up. Hope you want to play. My name is Paul with Diecast Graveyard. Happy holidays to you and your family.